defenses throughout their attacks, and that bears uh, repeating in this first run through with Pete Castro. Uh, is going to be none other than Clash Champs, and they're taking on TWOB. I mean, both of these teams are definitely clan favorites here. We have a killer roster of seasoned players on both sides. Clash Champs specifically plays very, very well under the name Space Station Gaming uh, for their primary roster, for the bulk of the roster during last year's World Championship. So definitely excited to see them, but a fan favorite there out of the, the Indian community, TWOB will be playing on the other side here, Woody. Clash Champs undefeated from the Swiss stage with a 3-0 record. 13 average stars in their wars, so TWB has got their work cut out for them. But Pete Castro is going to be blazing out of the gate. He is already in his first attack. It's going to be a La Loon strike, and he has sent in a hero dive in the bottom right-hand side of his face trying to make a big chunk out of this town hall compartment maybe even take a couple of air defenses with him let's see how he is doing now eric because he is getting into some thick action down here heroes on the other side are engaging he's dropping a rage spell now to keep this archer queen on task and going fast out in front the barbarian king and royal champion on the top side have done a big a uh, chunk out of his base and it looks like over on the left side that flame flinger has just done a, a, amazing work taking out a scatter shot now big early damage from Pete Castro looking to shape it up for a quick strike on the back end because he's only got a minute and 20 seconds left to get those last two stars that's absolutely enough time to get a lolo through the base here but I really love what he did with the queen there using the rage on the queen that was pretty wild to use that without healers but he does have to make his way through a defensive rage in just a moment here. He freezes it for now, delaying the activation of it, but with two multi inferners in the core of the base here, that is going to melt through some balloons very, very quickly, and hopefully that rage tower can fade by the time he starts to get targeted by it. Otherwise, he's going to be losing a huge amount of these balloons. Double damage out of both of those infernos, and you can see the yes. moment they step into the double range, it is over. All the balloons fall out of the sky, and it's looking like it's going to be an opening defense for TWB, holding back Pete Castro from Class Champs. Conflagration! TWOB advanced through the Swiss stage with an average of just 11.8 stars. That really suggests to me that they held on some great defense. Their team to help them with the base building and everything. So they are going to be a tough team to beat here. So being able to stop them and get a potential chance to get ahead is going to be a very big deal here. Go he'll be beginning for TWB. It looks like he's got this uh this elect or this, excuse me, Inferno Dragon attack that we've been seeing them used in the Swiss stages with uh looks like six lightning, a couple of skeleton spells and the bulk of his army is the Dragon Rider and Inferno Dragon mix will zap out everything around the monolith catching both of the sweepers with that lightning and you definitely do not want inferno dragons getting knocked back every time they get knocked back by a sweeper their beam resets and it slows down their damage output so taking out the sweepers is very very important and now woody let's see if he can push through the base Go Hill is the MVP for TWOB the highest hit rate player so they are really committing a lot of investment to this first attack attack trying to start off strong and on top we'll see if that is going to be the case because they've got a big 94 percent two-star standard set for them by the class champs now i wouldn't call this inferno dragon army a uh, very popular in the current meta but it is something that twob has brought back a few times uh, throughout their wars and it's something that they've seen success with it's a big kind of slow moving but high damage output attack that if you can minimize the defensive fire attacking your troops and they can just hop from one to one against these defenses especially if they're able to keep those big bulky dragon riders out in front it is very good news for this attack with a battle blip coming on in after the main uh front end of the space has just been obliterated go hill should grab this second star quickly and just look for cleanup afterwards there Landing into a poison tower that's gonna slow him down a little bit. A couple of red air bombs going up. The town hall Ooh. goes down with no issues there. Those balloons are completely sacrificial after they secure the town hall, so that is perfectly okay. He still has a skeleton spell that can assist him getting through the defensive king and the grand warden down south, but it needs to be patient here. He has his rogue champion. He lost his queen and king though, and that might spell trouble for this one. 
he definitely needs a support there going through the defensive king, but he'll have to rely on the skeleton spell, and maybe the baby dragon can do something significant here. But at oh. least the warden, okay, oh! there goes the warden, gets hit by a black air bomb, and now Woody, the moment of truth, he pushes his road champion through, has the distraction, but keep an eye on the warden damage. He hits like a truck, and the RC is going to get hit hard as he moves into the range. But with the help from that headhunter, just that one troop, Gohill is committed down there. The Envy King goes down. Regicide Supreme. We have still got a multi-target Inferno, though. And that is going to be a gigantic obstacle for him to reach that coveted third star. He's got a lot of cleanup along the outer edge, though. And he should be tickling, uh, trickling up into the, like, 30... Uh, I mean, 90 percentages uh, mm -hmm. at 88 right now. He still has a few more buildings left to claim, but it looks like out of the opening salvo, TWOB are going to be short just a couple of percentages uh, against Clash Champs at 90 now and barely climbing higher. Mm -hmm. He looks pretty so happy nice. with what he's been able to do with this first attack, but Go Hill has been held at bay and Salino from Clash random trash around the base there not only can prevent a time fail but also can give you a chance to get more percentage that's why it's so important but next up for class champs will be Padalino using a bunch of lightning takes out the eagle artillery grabs out the rage tower and I don't know what that other building was that he got there uh maybe a sweeper no I have no idea I don't know what the other building he got out of there with that uh lightning was but main target there was the eagle artillery and that rage tower and that's going to make so as he moves in those back end multis like we saw in the previous attacks we saw how much damage they can do under rage and that's not going to be an option for the defender this time but you got sumit 007 on defense here as Adelino sends in the super dragons right at this town hall yeah taking that that eagle artillery and i believe it was uh there was a rage spell over there as well. We saw how much difficulty a raged up double multi inferno in the center of the base can cause for an attack. So Padalino certainly doesn't want to have to go up against that. He's going to deal with that on the front end instead. While the super dragons are protected by that Grand Warden Eternal Tome. A bit unfortunate for Padalino that that was forced out against him as soon as his Grand Warden takes any more damage. There he goes. Down for the count. Not good news uh, as he's really... Oh, Grand Warden's back up. There he is. And he's back down again. Just the yeah, little the bit Phoenix of uh, <laughs> up and down there from the Phoenix. Yeah, I was like, wait, did I miss something? <laughs> it's okay. Well, the problem is that the Super Dragons didn't survive long enough to destroy the defensive, defensive CC building. So now he's got Rock Balloons and Defensive Ice Golems out chasing down his heroes right now. Flamethinger on the right side. Going to drop out an additional Super Dragon that will go to the middle of the base. But with just his row champion... Moving on ground, ground expos, defensive queen. There's a lot of base here. Definitely to push those super dragons much, much further into the base than they were able to push through. So this is going to be another defense. Wow. I mean, you could definitely show the preparation of TWB coming into this. Going to stop now two attackers from class champs. And like you were saying, as we are introducing this war, class champs hit rates are through the roof right now. So to open up with two defenses is a very big deal here for TWB. Base building has just been so incredibly impressive throughout this competition. And the later in the wars we get, the more effort these base builders are putting into just creating uncrackable defenses. Patolino from Class Champs now with a two star at the 82 percentage will be dragging that percentage down against TWOB, who had an opening to begin with that is just even wider now. It's, it's really hard to imagine that out of the first three attacks, none of them have been triples from the top-ranked teams now in the case of that. But I mean, Eric is going to be extremely impactful. And the first one that happens here could set the tone for the war. But here we go. We got the attempt coming in from Drago. Look at that invisibility. He had the Hound go to the invisibility or to the air defense first, and then he made it invisible so we could cross through and get a better angle to clear black air bombs. And he is able to push in and he will lock onto the town hall with those super wizards. And he got the tornado trap on the way of pop as well. So with the town hall disappearing on him for just a second, he moves his invisibility, gets it down, and he wiped out that entire chunk of the base. Now he needs to 
break the ring of defenses. He'll do that with the baby dragon. And now the heroes will stay on the bottom side of the hole that was created. And they can move down. And then I would assume you want to push the Lalo through the Eagle Artillery and try it with the cross tanking. But I see people do it a little bit different sometimes. And they move it to the top of the base because look where the defensive bro champion is. He does want a... A straight shot approach into the defensive row champion without having to push headhunters through the king first So I can see him coming in at either the bottom or the top of the base with Lalo We'll let's see, what, see what he decides to do here Electro Titan the noose troop ad is gonna be a great addition for this archer queen charge along the left side You know before we might have seen a P.E.K.K.A in this sort of role or yetis, but she is a new uh, ad that is a big bulky addition uh, to help out on these hero charges on the bottom corner now we've got the main attack coming through it's going to be that law low push with big support from that royal uh champion yet to be committed uh into the center but there she goes charging through takes down that air sweeper finds her way onto that builder hut and maybe even get a little bit of help onto that enemy eagle artillery big splash damage uh output there that he needs to eliminate as soon as possible because these loons are just taking a beating here now, but unfortunately, his headhunters were taking a beating as well. The, since he decided to come from the bottom, he did have to go through the king with his headhunters, and that left the queen up. But his heroes are able to handle it. He lost all the balloons at this point here. He just lost his ward to a black air bomb, and the defensive row champion stays standing, and she is going to hold the line right there. Wow. Yeah, you got to deal with those defensive heroes. You have to deal with the defensive heroes. That is why I, I really feel like... Most of the time, you'll see people like not deploy their board until they can have direct access to the defensive row champion so they can go in after her. But he had other problems to deal with there. There's not a huge amount of defenses left on the base here. It's just a couple of like point perimeter defenses, and he could have handled those maybe if he had more coming out of the middle. But yeah, a little bit unfortunate there. It's another defense for class champs as they hold strong. But once again, look at the percentage. It's like blow for blow here, Woody. But it looks like it's going to stay on advantage class champs. So, I mean, they're saying very, very close. But yeah, it's just like a percentage game out of like one. No, maybe he gets the percentage here. Does he? Does he what do you need here? I think he actually might be up by one percentage. Let's see that score update. Wow. Yes, indeed. Congratulations to the base builders on both sides right now because they have got a lot to be proud of with this very even keel, 34.8% from class champs. Leo needs to push it over the hill, just up a little bit more. That boulder rolling back down and down time and again. Can he get it to the top summit over Aijaz's base from TWOB? He's coming in with this... Uh, Flame Flinger out on the right side, long range damage against a well spread out defense that should get quite a few uh, chomps on, as well as the Archer Queen at the bottom with those healers to protect her, uh, will take out a big chunk of the base. But it's Electro Dragons this time, Eric, another one uh, that we don't see quite so often, but that gets a lot of big value if those lightning attacks are able to chain through multiple defenses. The core of this base certainly looks quite dense and well positioned for Electro Dragons. Super space away from the entry here. He'll just charge right through the town hall. Pops the ward ability to go through the town hall. Also absorbing the Eagle Artillery strikes there. Flame Flinger is staying relatively safe on the right side, but it's about to approach a mortar over there. So may start to take some fire. It is. And the Drags will keep on charging forward. They need to destroy the defensive CC building. I haven't seen much come out of there, if anything. And so if they can destroy it before any ground troops move into the area, then he's going to be in a very good spot. But I feel like this is a repeat of what happened with those Super Dragons. These E Drags reached the core. They have very little HP. They're getting destroyed in there, and that leaves up the entire backside of the base for his heroes to have to deal with. He does have a queen charge. He can potentially pull through. He needs to get the CC pull with his queen and fight it, but she's out of spell support. And now he's got Rockaboons and Lava Hound, got Expos, Monolith. I'm not uh, feeling too hot about this one here, Woody. I think this might not work for him. I have. <laughs> this is rough. This is rough. But how do you even pull through this back end? These, uh, the areas around these infernos are just holding this strong. Yeah, this is thicker than a bowl of oatmeal, and I don't know how you're going to chew through all that still remains. The monolith standing at the back side is just going to obliterate this poor royal champion. She's going to move through, and we'll be able to toss that shield off, getting a few more percentage here, but Leo is just so short. This might be one of the lowest percentage attacks so far in this war and coming at a time that class champs really needed to push it higher and higher uh there is going to be a big hole left now in their hearts that they need to fill for twob
to be defeated. Clash champs to make it difficult for them to come back. So here we go. It is going to be a double clone with two lightning and what? Oh, uh, this is a strange spell lineup here. What, what does uh, Sumit Double Seven have for us today? He's got a learning experience for all of us, Eric. This is going to be very interesting to see how he chooses to deploy a big spell complement to start things off here. Drop some lightning on that air sweeper to begin with, and that should give him easier access uh, deeper on in for this balloon army. Only seeing one Lava Hound uh, to be able to protect the mountain front, so he is looking for some massive damage early on. The Battle Blimp pops, and it's going to be Super Archers inside, firing off with great geometrical assault. They're taking down that Town Hall, a Spell Tower inside as well, uh, and grabbing a couple of Battle, uh, battle Builder Huts, too. Um, didn't get very many defenses, really just kind of claiming that Town Hall early on and taking down those Spell Towers. Pretty useful, but... Uh, I'd like to see how he's going to follow up now. Yeah, I mean that was a big spell investment, Woody. That was a that was a huge spell investment for how much he got out of this. So, with all of the major defenses other than the town hall still standing, he's going to have to push through the rest of the base here with the heroes to set up Lalo, and the Lalo is going to have zero spell support. So that's going to make it even more important than ever that they get into those multi in the middle of the base there and at least get one of them out of the way. He has one freeze to support, but look at the position of the Rage Tower. It is going to boost all the, or multiple air defenses, but more importantly, it's going to boost all three multi infernos That is going to be an, inc an insane amount of damage as he goes to the core, and with very, very little spell support. One freeze and a ward ability. He's going to have to move through there extremely fast, and I don't know how I feel about this one, Woody, but here we go. Into the core of this base, the Bloons march forward. They are just going too slow though. They pass right back outside again to try to go take down a mortar. And with that, they're going down even <laughs> before they've even reached the first Inferno Tower, Eric. Sumit is just wow. faced against such a massive foe in Leo's base here. That rage up triple multi Inferno is the like pinnacle of splash damage. I don't even know if it's possible to create a more compact, high damage compartment than what Leo has here. Triple multi-infernos with an eagle artillery, raged up and air defenses. It's like anything that flies is just gonna evaporate in seconds. And that's exactly what we've seen here now. Unfortunately, one of the strongest players on TWOB's wow. side, a great content creator in his own right and representing the Indian community with his head held high. But this is gonna be a difficult blow to suffer now as TWOB are gonna fall behind on percentage. Simple, but ultimately you saw that core just shred him with no spell support and now Luke Zera gonna be making his way into the next one. It is Super Dragons, a lot of lightning. He's gonna go ahead and deal with the the Rage Tower bright and early into this attack here so he doesn't have to hit it later on. And he got a sweeper out of the way. And if he's gonna use the, if he's gonna take out the sweeper onto that left side, he could do a left side entry, but we'll see where he decides to make his way in. But as he starts off, the Flame Flinger is working on the right side and he picked off an air defense up in the very top corner with Rock Bloom. So we'll just trim out the defense up there and it does look like they're doing it again. They're, they're very, very determined to make either Super Dragons or Electro Dragons work on this page, which is very odd considering how much this team typically is in a state with Lalo attacks and Queen Charge attacks. This is so out of the ordinary for them, Woody. Super Dragons once again need relatively clustered defenses, just like those Electro Dragons, to get splash damage value off. Loopsira is finding that Town Hall and the first star is claimed. He's pushing on into the center now with that Eternal Tome protecting them from the Monolith. Big heavy damage dealt out to those beefy Super Dragons. So you definitely want to take that down as quickly as possible. They're getting some shots off though with a Tornado Trap going off. They are going to be spun around, confused and abused. Unable to take the core down. And with the cleanup just along the outer edges being only one Super Dragon down on the right side. You are correct yet again, Eric, that it is going to be a high hill for them to climb to keep that percentage in the lead against TWOB. Very super difficult entry point here, followed up from a pretty nice early stab. You know, precise early hits, even if they spend a lot of spell capacity, even if they throw an entire siege machine at the base, can be much more useful than just putting all of your force into the main attack. 
a dagger in the heart is going to do more damage than a slap in the face, right? But that precise strike early on has to set up perfectly for what is to follow. The more investment that you have early on, the more you have to make sure that you're taking out exactly what you need to. And these multi-tower infernos just always seem to be the nail in the coffin for these attackers. Whether they're on uh, defense right in the core, getting raged up, or whether they're far out and back protected in these giant compartments. Look, these multi-target infernos almost always have two tiles separating them from the walls if they're going to be protected on the back end of the base like this because it just makes it so hard to path into them this archer queen is just getting burnt to a crisp over successive inferno beams as she paths around the base now unable to finally reach them on the final uh strike but here we are at the very end now with loop zero at 93 percent those minions trying to make it 94 but time running out against them the Clash Champs will stay ahead on Persistence. And it's very, very important that if you're going to use an attack like that, we need to destroy the CC building. So now with that in mind, we're seeing the Inferno Dragon attack come in again here for Ajaz. And we'll see if he can do it a little bit differently. He uses the Lightning to take out the Rage Tower. And he picked up an Inferno with it. So now he'll potentially use that as a funnel here. And... They've been attacking from the side of the base there rather than the town hall side when they use the Inferno Dragon. So we'll see if that works a little bit better here. I just does get a Tesla Tower popping up over the left side corner and that could frustrate his funneling attempts a little bit there. We've been zapping through those rocket balloons, the balloons, and now the Inferno Dragons. You see four Inferno Dragons pulled off onto that Tesla Tower. Are they going to rejoin back up with the Grand Warden in the center to get that Eternal Tome? A few of them do but it is not going to be the perfect entry point that he was hoping for. He needs 98% two-star to tie it up against Clash Champs, 99% to be ahead by just 1% on that uh, lead, and needs the three-star to really give TWOB the decisive finishing move here for uh, their final attacks to come in this war. But pushing along the bottom side now, he has finally taken down that Town Hall and with the second star claimed, it's all about the cleanup at this point. That central dark monolith gets a skeleton spell trying to tick away at it. But that is not gonna be enough to finish it off, Eric. Yeah, yeah, the Inferno Dragons were right there. They were taken out by traps trying to get or take advantage of that skeleton spell that he placed onto the uh, the monolith, but that's gonna be a problem. He'll throw down his Road Champion to go try to deal with it. Unfortunately, the Road Champion goes to the Spell Tower first, and that means it's gonna be making that inf that uh, monolith invisible. She's got other targets to go after for just a minute, and she can stand inside of that invisibility, but she's going to step forward. There's still the defensive Road Champion up ahead, and it is gonna be another defense. This Road Champion has zero chance to pull through at this point. No, She'll get the stun no, and get the monolith no. down. <laughs> yeah, Woody, this is this is such a defensive war. Literally one triple. Either team tripling on this final exchange could decide it and send the other team packing down to the lower bracket. We need a hero, Eric! Where is our three-star attacker? End this anguish and give us a decisive lead one way or another. Class Chance and TWOB are still just vying for that top spot with neither of them laying claim. We are looking for a golden ticket team and whoever gets the three star in this next two series of attacks will decide who wins it all for this team. If both of them get three stars, Clash Champs will get the win and it looks like with a big percentage advantage as well, Clash Champs is in the driver's seat right now. It's going to be a big mountain to climb. Of what the Lalo meta has been showing us. The More Hulk super meta, dragons. The, Why not? It's the Electro Titan meta. Like, it's just showing you the bases that are able to stop those. But now, Selenio can decide the war right here. Buddy. We have a, another attempt at super dragon. What is... I don't know that I've ever seen Clash Champs break out a dragon attack on every single attack in an entire war what is the what is the player why did why are they changing things up so much here when so much is on the line this is crazy but they're attempting the super dragons again double sweepers facing away from the town hall he zaps out the eagle artillery area and this time this time i mean all other times out the window this time Push the Super Dragons in, 
destroy the CC and give your heroes a chance at the backside. I feel like uh, I missed a memo or something here. Like, is there some reason that balloons and lava hounds have just like gone out of favor? Or are they they're, they're no longer vogue? Do the, do, the, do the players just don't like the way they look anymore? Was there a, a stealth nerf that I missed? Why have they switched so confidently from one of the most reliably uh, three-star attacking army compositions in the game to something out of the meta compared to that? They're just like kind of leaving it up to chance now, hoping that the splash damage from these super dragons is going to be enough to pierce into the core. But the monolith has just mm. once again obliterated them. Why would you do this to us, Selino? <laughs> again, hey, we are hey. hoping for the three star, hey. and again, it looks like we are going to be disappointed with that rage oh. spell popping off in the center, just souping up that multi target inferno burning every dragon in the sky and watching them fall down to the ground. Oh, Woody, he's okay. He's he got the CC down. He got the model down. He still has his world champion on standby. She starts in the top. The queen dragons. is taking on the defense on the right. He's got the rock of, he's got the CC dropping out on the side there. Super Dragon steps in to fight out the defensive CC. He knows he's done it. Selenio will get the first and only triple of the war and he will lock it in. For Clash Champs, there is nothing that can stop the heroes. The Super Dragons finally get that defensive CC building down and with it, the troops that were inside, freeing up the heroes to sweep out the backside of the base. And they were all almost exactly the same style of base. And so uh, maybe that is why we saw the same attack going in over and over because every single base, just like this one, just like this one, you have air defenses all the way out on each of the four corners that are wide to the outside where you can easily reach them with like rock and something like that. But you have the sweepers facing towards the eagle artillery side of the base away from the town hall this one's going to be the lalo approach here but you can see every single base throughout this entire war felt like it was so similar that you could throw very similar attacks at every single one of them have a chance to pull through and ultimately does get the triple there for class chance it took him a few attempts but in the end they do ultimately get one down but here we go tiab is after using that lightning to take out the left side Inferno. He's using that as a funneling point there with the Yeti down south and wall breaking his heroes in with the damage they down in the area there. He's able to push his heroes all the way in and if they get the Eagle Artillery, that's what he's looking for there. He invested extra freeze to get the queen through because she doesn't have her ability. He doesn't have an invisibility to get her to skip the defense to CC and get to the Eagle Artillery. So the Eagle Artillery will stay standing and we'll see how he handles it. But Keep in mind, we have two defensive heroes that are very likely to stay standing here. King's working onto the world champion left side, but I don't know if he's gonna have enough punch. He leaves her up. Oh, maybe the Phoenix can finish up there. There we go, Phoenix got it. And now the headhunters can get the defensive queen. This has a really solid chance here, Woody. Queen's gonna snipe down that Eagle artillery well as well. It doesn't even look like it's gonna get a shot. Oh, just one shot off. But these balloons are still quite safe in the interior. They are going to be pushing into a, a big old Giga Inferno from Ooh. that town hall, though. Tyab doing his best to keep oh. them on path, but they are just taking a massive amount of damage. Finally, the town hall does now go down. The balloons are starting to coalesce along the outer edge, but they're outside of the Grand Warden's life aura. And just so much splash damage raining down onto them has prevented them uh, from getting back for a cleanup attempt. So we've got that multi-target Inferno on the final edge of this base, still being the uh, last standing defense that is going to deny these attackers so many times. But Tyab is looking pretty strong with these last two heroes ready to take up as much percentage as he can, pushing ever closer toward that 90 mark. But now raged up, that last line of defense will hold. 86 skidoo for Tyab as TWOB do not get a single triple in this war against the Clash Champs who have won. Don't look at the screen right now. It's Clash <laughs> Champs who have won this war. Disregard any news to the contrary. And let's take a look at the war stats with 11 stars to Clash Champs name. 87.6 percentage average destruction. Their average destruction and average stars have been brought mm -hmm. way down, though. Coming in with 13 star average and a percentage destruction in the 90s now dropped into the 80s. 
TWOB mm -hmm. has certainly put up the most difficult bases for Clash Champs to go up against in this series so far. And with that defense holding strong, I have lots to expect from TWOB in the lower bracket later on. Yeah, they both need to shake that one out there. They both struggled on offense a bit. The base building was very, very strong. You see a lot of these lower percentage attacks, a lot of uh, attacks that were hold, held way further than you would have expected them to perform at. But uh, there were there were some mistakes. There were definitely some mistakes to be had there. Uh, nothing like crazy stands out specifically, but I, I you got to hand it to the base builders here. They did a fantastic job on holding, and we'll see if that. <laughs>